Hi everybody, this is Lolita Shirao, AKA Lo, your take action chick. And uh, I'm very excited. I, I got a uh, very special guest, Mr. Ian Flanagan. And uh, I'm doing, for those of you obviously, we're doing the uh, video conference internet call here. Uh, but if you're listening to audio, thanks uh, for tuning in to the Take Action uh, Real Estate Investing Podcast. And what I want to do before I go ahead and uh, let Ian just go loose on some very exciting information and, and him sharing some uh, success that he's having with his real estate investing business. Talk a little bit about him. Uh, Ian is the founder of Freedom Investing Academy and co-founder of Golden Falls Properties uh, with his property, Bandel Kite. Did I pronounce that right? Bandel. Bandel. Like Bandel. Bandel. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I asked you before and I knew I was going to butcher it. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, Ian and uh, his company, Freedom Investing, is, uh, you know, they, they help uh, aspiring seasoned investors to take control of the real estate market. Um, there's so much he's done. Uh, you guys help uh, your students and other investors to get a return on invest in their, on, uh, their investments upward from 50 to 300 percent range or even more. Um, there's so much about you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk a little bit more uh, about you and how you stumbled into real estate investing. I'm, I'm sure people are ready to hear you, but I do want to share quickly how I found you, and it was through YouTube. You were doing another interview. Uh, with another real estate investor talking about Hidden Cash Flow Fortunes, which is a, a product that you have created, a program actually, that I'm really excited about. And I was actually looking for someone locally to reach out to to see how uh, we could grow our business with this certain aspect of real estate investing because, you know, we've been wholesalers uh, over the last eight years. I've been in business. We've uh, purchased and bought properties as well, cash flow. Uh, but what you're doing as far as the seller financing, um, you know, I've, I've always been intrigued and with notes. So I'm really glad that you're here to talk about it. So without any further delay, I appreciate you being here and welcome. Well, thank you so much, Alita. <laughs> I'm glad to be here and uh, share my story with yourself and your subscribers. Awesome. Well, thank you. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Tell us a little okay. bit about yourself and how you got started in real estate investing. Well, um... I am a retired hairdresser, so um, for the, I guess, you know, I did hair for about 12 years, and, you know, I, I, gosh, I know this sounds cliche, but after reading the little purple book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, made me realize that I was trading dollars for hours, and if I wanted to really change that or live a different life as I grew older, that I needed to change the way I thought about making money, building, you know, wealth, and buying and selling assets, so... You know, so 2006 was my um, the first time I bought a home. So that's when I actually got the bug for real estate was back in 06. And and it really just catapulted me into the whole real estate arena, and you know, which we call the game, right? Right. <laughs> so that's what was really my intro into real estate. But, you know, prior to that, I was a musician. I was going to college. And, and um, you know, my entire life I had heard, folks becoming wealthy from real estate and and obviously all the biggest buildings in the world and in every major city are real estate and owned by the wealthiest people in the world so right. I just knew that I wanted to be involved with real estate somehow and um, so back in 06 is kind of when it started for me you know mm -hmm. credit card education flying across the country you know I still consume digital products if I see um, things on the internet of of value and I feel like I can learn from it, I purchase them still. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I'm still actively um, educating myself. You know, real estate's a lifelong education. Yes. Um, you know, whenever you think you got something figured out, the market changes and your business changes, and you know, which I've experienced, you know, time and time again, especially with the market that we're in now. And you know this too. You know, the uh, the big equity deals just aren't aren't flying off the trees like they used to. Right. <laughs> a yes. few years back, you know, so. You know, we've shifted, and, and even now, the model that we're in currently it works well. Um, you know, carrying back notes and seller financing will always be very, very powerful. Um, so depending on, you know, how you grow your brand and mm -hmm. your business structure and all your network and your funding and your marketing, so on and so forth, um, you know, I'm still looking and always looking at the next thing that's coming or trying to figure out 
where it's going to be our best return on investment and so on and so forth. Um, but I got to tell you, though, getting in, you know, after wholesaling houses and renovating properties, um, you know, I still wholesale houses today. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do big major renovations. If I see a property that's that needs significant, significant repair, I just walk away because I've been down that road. Yeah. Um, and I'm just looking for real, you know, lipstick on a pig, paint, carpet, <laughs> surfaces, if I can yeah. change out the countertops, fixtures, so on and so forth. Um, so I really kind of stay away from the big reno jobs just because mm -hmm. it's, it, it'll just drain your bank account very, very quickly. Um, you know, I have to say it's, it, it is still a very, very profitable niche in real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure at some point I'll be, I'll get back into them, you know, when we have the next downturn and I can buy a, you know, half a million or $750,000 home for 300, I'll mm -hmm. probably buy it, renovate it and resell it. But, um, Getting over to the notes, the hidden cash flow fortune is, you know, what my primary niche is now. And, and I got to say, I mean, getting into the note business has been a ride because it has opened up relationships that I couldn't even imagine. Sure. It's opened up hedge funds. And, I mean, I have relationships with massive hedge funds and, you know, hundreds of millions and billions and billions of dollars just in notes. They call that the paper game. Yes. So... Well, let me, the, let me say this. Now. I didn't mean to cut you off, but right okay. here, because I know we're going to really get into some meat of, of what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I know that my listeners uh, and subscribers are really excited about it. I want to make sure you guys get your pen and paper right now. Get ready to take notes. I have mine. So, but Ian, I, that's what I, right now, I really want you to talk about your hidden cash flow. And one of the questions I have with this um, particular strategy, creative strategy that you teach and that you're doing is that you mainly focus, are you mainly focusing on properties that have little to no equity? Like you said earlier in this market, there's not a lot of properties that have a lot of meat on the bone like they did several years ago. So do you focus on those type of properties uh, and, and find an owner finance buyer and then turn around and sell the note to the hedge funds? Is, is that correct? Yeah, that, that's a combination, but I mean, more importantly now, what I'm targeting is I'm looking for motivated sellers, number one. Right. But also, I focus on the spread on the deals. I don't focus on the equity. Okay. Because I can create equity um, by simply having a larger interest rate when I sell because if I have a payment that I'm paying out to a seller or, or whatever, wherever the debt is coming from of $500, mm -hmm. um, let's say it's at zero interest or a really low interest rate, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to sell that property. I'm just going to mark it up five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and create another note at a higher interest rate, and that, and that really maximizes my, my cash flow. And now I can also sell that buyer on and be like, look, if you want to pay your property off in 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. then you're going to pay a little bit more up front. And that's another strategy that I can really maximize my net cash flow. Okay. Because when you're renting a property, you're only going to get what the market rent is. Right. Unless you're in one of those really, really hyper competitive markets like Richardson, Texas or something like that. That's where, true. Um, but you can't <coughs> necessarily take a, a rental area that's $1,200 and get someone to pay you $1,800. But what you can do is if you're, if you're, selling a property and a 30-year note would be 1200 and then if you want to try to maximize your net cash flow you can tell that end buyer and be like look we can amortize your your note over 10 or 15 years and you'll pay it off in half the time how does that sound to you can you afford that and if they say yes now you've literally tripled your cash flow so the note business is is so attractive in the way that you can create the cash flow. You can create the interest and the returns. And our investors, I mean, literally, it's the hottest investment that they have right now. Sure. Um, because our portfolios are kicking off a little over 11% as a net return. And then every wow. single year, that mm -hmm. number grows. Okay. Because remember, when we get more of our principal back, our return continues to grow over time. So that was something that my partner and I really were able to figure out after we got beat up in the rehab game mm -hmm. because we borrow a certain amount of cash for the flips and we call it the line of diminishing return. And the day that you buy a house to mm -hmm. renovate, your projected profits are diminishing every single day because of your carrying costs, cost of capital, and your unexpected expenses to get the job done. So you're three, four, five months into it and you're literally, your returns are just driving down 
while your lender is still getting the same amount, your hard money lender or whatever the case may be. But mm -hmm. once we turned around and we bought a house and turned around and sold it on a note and didn't touch it, once we calculated what those returns were, it was like, OMG, because <laughs> when we had a seller carry back at 0% interest, 0 interest, and then we borrowed, let's say, five or $8,000 off of a line of credit. I mean, we didn't have any of our own money into the deal. Mm -hmm. But if you calculate the return on that, it's literally triple, triple and quadruple digits. So once we came across, once we saw how that worked, mm -hmm. it just it changed the game. It just exploded everything for us. And yeah, so just like you said, it changed, changed the, game. the game. So let's break this down even more because I know. I've probably got some listeners that's like, okay, I understand a little bit, but it's still a little bit above my head. So let's start here. And this okay. is a good example. So you get a motivated seller to call you, all right, off of your, and we'll go into marketing strategies here, uh, you know, down the line. You get a motivated seller to call you. They're ready to sell, all right? They're motivated, but uh, they're not interested in the wholesale deal because they don't have enough equity, all right? but they want to get rid of the property. So how would you go about structuring, uh, and, and you can use a recent deal as far as numbers to give us an idea of what you would propose to that particular homeowner to sell on terms. Okay. Well, let's just use $100,000 because that's just the easiest sure. round number that makes sense. Okay. But I'm going to pull my calculator out just so I'm not throwing random numbers out. Okay. So let's say the house is worth $100,000. Yes. Well, I can literally buy the house if they owe 95 because I'm just going to take over their debt and then I'm going to create, I'm going to sell the house for 110 So there's my $15,000 of equity. But like I said, I don't focus on the equity, I focus on the spread because I know if I can pick it up for 95 I know that I can sell it for 110 Right. Selling a house for 10000 over on terms is literally, guys are doing it all day, every day. I've done it. And I've actually sat down with the largest buyer of, actually the largest buyer and seller of owner-financed homes in Texas. They do over 300 homes a year, and we have a relationship with them. Nice. That's a whole another, whole another ball game. But um, sure. they have over 600 loans, and they're trying to get 20 million dollars out this year alone. Wow. So anyway, they're selling the properties at the highest, highest price point. So mm -hmm. if the ARV is 100, they're selling it for 110 all day long. You know, they're getting anywhere from. Five to ten percent down, so the note the, the note value is right at a hundred grand, which is, you know, the, the property value. So, for that seller that owes ninety five, they really don't have any equity. They'd be negative mm -hmm. if they had to do the deal. So, you know, you can offer them five hundred dollars, thousand dollars, whatever the case may be, whatever they're willing to accept to move on. Um, if they're behind on payments, then yeah, you're going to have to make those payments up. Right. Um, so there's, that's like a two prong strategy there. If it doesn't have any equity whatsoever and there's really no room to get it to cash flow because their monthly payment is already really high, mm -hmm. then I can just put it under contract and assign it to my buyer. Right. So I can literally get into the deal from 40, 60 cents. If that's not going to work, then I can attack them at 80, 85. If that's not going to work, I can get them at 90, 95%. And if that's not going to work, I can buy it at hundred percent and just assign it. Got you. But that doesn't necessarily leave me any cash flow. But in the scenario that we're talking about, hundred thousand dollar home that they owe ninety five, I can take over their debt and their payment at ninety five, and then I'm gonna just look at the spread. I'm gonna sell it for one fifteen, and I'm gonna sell it on a note. That strategy that I talked about earlier, would you like to pay your house off in half the time? So I know that I can create the net cash flow based off of the interest rate and the term. Mm -hmm. The longer the term, the, the lower the payment. The shorter the term higher the payment okay awesome. so that's kind of my approach on these leads that are coming in and, and that's something that we can talk about too about your leads that come in that to show you how to monetize them when they don't have equity or they're not willing to take the 40 or 60 percent all cash offer especially on pretty houses mm -hmm. so it's a very very attractive way and if if they have a mortgage you can take it over um, if they have equity and they still don't want to sell at a lower you know discount then mm -hmm. you can you know, for a hundred thousand dollar home, let's say they uh, let's say they owe sixty, and you agree to pay them, you know, ninety. Mm -hmm. Well, there's thirty thousand dollars in equity there, so you can write that up on a second note. Right. You can give them a small chunk at closing. Write this, you know, write it, write the balance up in a second note. Pay the first, add the second. Now I'm going to create a third, which is a double wrap, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to sell it because 
every house that I sell, other than wholesale houses, mm-hmm. I sell them on a note. Gotcha. I don't sell. I don't sell to conventional buyers anymore. Awesome. Well, it, it, there's so much money in in that right now, and uh, that I know. I'm I'm more familiar with subject twos. Uh, we purchase properties on subject twos. Uh, put, yeah, powerful put, strategy. Oh yeah, powerful strategy. And now let me ask you this question. Good, this is good stuff. So let's say you have a, a lead that comes in, and the owner uh, owns owns the property free and clear. Okay, and and let's and, and let's say it's an older let's say it's an older lady, okay, that's retired and she's interested in cash flow, so okay. that's when you would talk to her about seller financing and her yep. carrying uh, doing a carry back. Is that correct? Absolutely. Talk about that if you yeah. So will. that conversation is very simple. It's you know, you know, Mrs. Seller, I saw that you have a property for sale. You know, what are you asking for your property? She says, Oh, I'm asking a hundred thousand dollars for it. What do you think it's worth? Oh, I think it might be worth 105, 110. They're like, okay, what's, you know, if you're willing to sell your property with a down payment and the balance of monthly, what's the least you could accept as a down payment? I let her tell me. Mm-hmm. And if she says, well, I need you to just make me an offer, I'd say, well, ma'am, I need you to tell me what you're willing to accept as a down payment. Because remember, the first rule of negotiation, he who speaks first loses. Yes. So I want the seller to give me a number. And if she does not give me a number, I'm going to hit her really low. How does $500 sound as a down payment? Oh, well, I couldn't accept that. (laughs) Okay, now we've established what my baseline is. So if I do have to speak first, I'm going to make sure I do not lose. (laughs) Right. Obviously, she's going to want, you know, $5,000, $15,000, $20,000. And if she's, you know, really, really motivated, she's, you know, not going to be expecting that much. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, even with conventional financing, the average down payment is 5%. Yes. Even with conventional, I mean, not... You know, not too many people have 20% down. So anyway, you know, the question is, you know, what's the least you could accept as a down payment? And the, and the, what's the least you could accept as a monthly? And then I let her tell me. Mm-hmm. And I let her give me a number. So let's say she says $10,000 down and, uh, you know, $600 a month. So now I have a starting point. So the, if the purchase price was $100,000, mm-hmm. $10,000 down balance and payment, so on and so forth. So what I would do is I would try to reduce that 10000 to like a 3000 So I would take $100,000, I'd subtract 3000 and there's a balance of 97000 right? right? And then I would just divide that by 30 years, which is 360 months, and that gives me a payment of $270. Okay. So I would hit her with that number as my offer first. And this is 0% interest. Yeah, I don't say 0%. I just say balance and monthly payment. Got you. Okay. That's good. And then if, so this would be my, this would be my first offer to her. I pre-screened her. She told me she wanted 100000 for the house. She wanted 10000 down and 600 a month. They're like, okay, great, Miss Seller. I'm going to get back with you, you know, in the next hour or two with an offer for you. And you can write this up in just a verbal body of an email if you want to write it on a letter of intent, you can write that. Mm-hmm. Um, but my response or my offer back to her because, you know, you don't want to just throw a contract in front of a lady like that until you guys have come to an agreement on terms and price, so on and so forth. Once you come to an agreement, mm-hmm. then you want to write up the purchase and sale agreement and send it over. But um, but just to, just to make it simple for that seller, especially an older person that's, you know, may or may not be motivated or they are motivated just mm-hmm. depending on the situation but I'm only going to pay you know 85 90 95 percent on properties that don't need anything right like they can't have anything wrong with them I mean maybe some dirty carpet that I can just send somebody in there and clean up get the place cleaned up and turn around so now when we're buying properties that need you know they need updating whether there's you know wallpaper hanging off the walls you know nasty carpet that needs to be pulled out now i'm going for a little bit bigger of a discount got you so, so with, her, with her and let's say that she agreed to take three thousand or four thousand down mm-hmm. and two hundred or three hundred dollars a month now what you're gonna do is market for a buyer oh yeah that can pay you ten thousand or more down yep. and pay seven eight hundred dollars a month Right, yes, and that's the correct. difference from that three to that seven hundred a month is cash flow. Well, sure. minus taxes, insurance, and I believe a servicing, because you use a third party servicing company, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. and we put the, 
the taxes, the insurance on top of the buyer's payment. Sure. So my payment to my seller is net. Got you. So if it's three hundred, she just gets three hundred a month, and then I put the taxes, insurance, and then I add a servicing fee, and I have the buyer pay for that. And then, you know, I'm the landlord. I mean, I'm not the landlord. I turn into the bank because when I sell the property, they own the house. We board it with the, the servicer, and then the servicing company has all the communication with the borrower. If they're late, whatever the case may be, they're the ones calling them. You know, we just look for the wire in the middle of the month. Right. And that's the hit, that's one of the hidden cash flow secrets exactly. is that's that you're exactly. the bank. As investors, we're the bank now. Um, now, does the buyer does the buyer get the, well? The buyer gets the deed to the property if when they pay the down payment. Is that correct? Yes, that closing because okay. we're in Texas here. You know, after yes. 2005, there were restrictions on contract for deed and mm -hmm. long term lease purchases. Correct. So we just keep it clean. We give them the deed. Um, you know, we process our borrowers through a third party loan originator, and mm -hmm. that keeps us in compliance with Dodd Frank, property code, truth in lending, RESPA, so on and so forth. Yes. And it's the QN mortgage, which is the qualified mortgage. You know, Dodd-Frank doesn't say that we cannot do this. Okay. They just want lenders, especially the big lenders, to qualify the borrower. And we qualify them to the standard of FHA, which right now FHA has a product that's a 580 credit score. They call it the 222. Nice. I'm friends with several mortgage brokers. I've heard this over and over and over because we've been actually working on our portfolio to get some of these borrowers um, – refinanced and what they're looking for is two years of tax returns, two years of bank statements and two years of job history with a 580 credit score. Now that's not very hard to do in today's market. Right. So and and that's just the reality of it. That was and that that was going to be the one of my questions uh, kind of jumping around is Dodd Frank laws because I know that that comes up a lot. People talk about it a lot. They're scared to death of it if they don't understand it. <laughs> And I know that you guys already have your systems and your relationships in place to make sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Yep. And uh, that's obviously that's that's wonderful um, that you have that in place. Now, let me ask you another question. Sure. As far as your marketing, how do you is, is there any different verbiage that you use on your marketing pieces uh, for sellers when you're going after these type of opportunities, these deals? Yeah, here's a huge golden nugget. <laughs> Great. We pay full price with no fees or commissions at closing. And that gets the phone to ring pretty good. Um, awesome. You know, it's it, it, it's an attractive marketing piece. You know, you always want to keep it simple. Um, you know, just letting folks know that you can pay them close to what they're asking. Um, so, I mean, that would be the huge takeaway. But also it comes down to just finding a motivated seller. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's the biggest takeaway. And, and, and that's how we got started. Um, we don't buy every single house like that. Obviously, mm -hmm. we've evolved our business, and we have a lot of private capital investors behind us. So, you know, we've, we've evolved into that. But I tell you, that's exactly how we started. Sure. Was doing seller carrybacks, and that was the light bulb that went off. Um, and as we were, you know, as we had notes for sale, and like I said, the note business opened up a whole other ball game for us. Sure. And that opened up more private capital over the years, and and uh, you know, investors are really, really wanting these notes. So you know, we don't sell every single note. Um, our, we 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 have this model replicated in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. which we don't sell any of the notes. We sometimes we sell partials of them. Mm -hmm. But our Texas model is a little different because we operate off a line of credit. Okay. And uh, so we are selling notes here in Texas, and we have note buyers that are literally licking their chops, <laughs> just waiting for these notes to be created. Um, and then we can go out there and buy them, you know, buy more properties, create more notes. So. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, now let me ask you, how many offers do you share with the sellers when you call them back? Um, you know, it, it just depends. It depends on their their motivation of, mm -hmm. and also what they what they kind of stated, you know, mm -hmm. what they're looking for. Okay. Um, I, I do I do recommend you know structuring a multiple offer, um, like one offer at like like I said, depending on the condition of the property, you mm -hmm. can pay a lot more. Um, you know, ninety two percent of asking price with a small down payment balance a monthly, and then like a 85% of asking price with a little bit bigger down payment in the balance in monthly. Um, but like I said, I just try to focus on the spread, and that's exactly what I teach new people how to do it is focus on the spread and not the equity because 
you know, you can buy the house at 90, 95% because you know you're marking it up 5, 10% over market and creating a larger interest rate on the back end. Sure. And I shared with the strategy how to maximize that net number as well by shortening the term of the buyer. Okay. Awesome. Um, how are you tying up the properties? Are you just using a, a traditional trick contract if, if the seller is interested in selling on terms? And maybe uh, is the seller financing addendum? Yep, is it? that's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, everything that we do, we, you know, we, we pass our documents through licensed broker, a licensed real estate agent, a licensed mm -hmm. um, loan originator, a licensed attorney, a licensed title company, licensed third-party servicers. So we use the Texas promulgated forms, and whenever we put a property under contract, it's just a standard one to four family purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. um, the seller financing addendum, and if it's older than 1978, we use the lead-based paint addendum. And those are the three documents that we use to tie a property up. I always do an option, an inspection period yep. of my properties. So I'll give the seller like a $50 check to give me the option period. Um, I try to keep either $100 or $500 as an earnest money deposit, send that to the title company, and literally, as soon as we get it under contract, we're marketing it heavily. And that was my next question. How are you finding your buyers? Well, and, the, and, the mm -hmm. fastest way to find buyers are banded signs. Yeah. Um, so no matter where the property is, and we do pre-printed signs, you know, it says house for sale, owner financing, and it has a local phone number. But that's actually a call forwarding phone number that I forward into a call capture software, which is like an 800 number. And then it has... I come on the line when they call the number. It says, thank you for calling. We have owner finance houses available. Mm -hmm. So I capture their number, and then I say, um, if you'd like to find out what properties we have available right now, please press 1. You'll be contact. You'll be, you know, in touch with one of our associates. And then when they hit 1, it goes out to our sales team, and there's a bilingual staff that takes these phone calls. So they literally take all the phone calls and whatever properties we have at the moment. They set up the, the bulk showings, meaning if there's 50 people that want to look at a house, we send all 50 people at the same time. We don't do individual mm -hmm. showings. Oh, that's good. Okay. So we send everybody the house all at one time. We'll do like a three-hour window on Saturday, a three-hour window on Sunday. And there'll be typically be several people that are very, very interested, especially if we've gone in and done paint and carpet and done some updates to the property. If it doesn't need anything, we just get it cleaned up. We just get it ready to go. Um, even in our inspection period, I'll spend the money just to have the house cleaned up. It doesn't matter. Um, because I'm trying to lock it up under contract. And then what we do is if we have multiple people that are wanting to buy the house, we'll mm -hmm. actually do a round-robbing bid on their down payment. Wow. So whoever cool. has the highest down payment gets the property. So I'm trying to push my down payments up as high as possible. And then whatever they have the highest down payment, my sales, my sales agent will contact me or my partner and we'll run the numbers. We'll go back and forth. And we go ahead and go, we get them under contract before we pull their credit. Okay. Because um, we have a window, there's a seven-day option from the day that they sign the disclosures. So we sign the track contract, the financing addendum. They also sign our servicing docs right up front so they know that they're paying the $35. Um, so that's another set of documents that they'll sign when they get ready to buy the house, when they sign the agreements. Mm -hmm. um, and then within three days, they need to get with the loan originator. Um, and there's an online web form that we send them to that they can fill out the 1003K app. They have to pay a 195 processing fee right up front. Sure. And that basically our underwriter, loan originator, and that just covers their you know time and effort to uh, sure. start putting the file together for whatever reason if the buyers don't you know if the hey, buyers no. don't close. Right. And then the day they sign the disclosures, um, hold on, let me back up a minute. So right when they sign that purchase and sale agreement, mm -hmm. and we're negotiating the terms of the agreement, um, we charge 6.5% over APOR. So whatever the daily APOR is of you know of the mortgage rates for that day, we'll, we'll add 6.5%. So if today's rate is 3.75, I'll add 6.5, and they're going to pay 10.25% interest. Got you. And that's another thing that, uh, you know, and we get our information from the Consumer F Protection Finance Bureau. And you can read about all this sure. on the CFPB.org websites. Um, so we charge 6.5% over APOR. Yes, it's a high-cost mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, they are required to do a 
HUD class. They can either do it online or do it in person before they close. Mm-hmm. So they understand the, you know, what they're doing, what they're paying for. And um, so that we get them under contract. They sign the disclosure. Seven days later, we close them. Awesome. We'll close the transaction and we'll, we'll push our purchase back until they get ready to close. And then we'll double close them at the same time. That sounds like you guys really have the process in place. And, you know, with any business, that's, I think, key and critical to, yeah, to having is. success. It is. And I know it's hard to get your head around all that when you're first yeah. starting out. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, you know, it took us years and years and years to iron everything out. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but, you know, nothing is perfect. But we've definitely streamlined and understand exactly all the bases that need to be covered and then how the deals need to go down at closing and the proper way to set up the escrows and who pays for what, sure. insurance, so on and so forth. So, yeah, we've definitely figured it all out. Awesome. Yep, yeah, you definitely have. Uh, what would you say is your favorite strategy out of out of all the different ones you've talked about as far as like long-term capital, short-term? What, what's, what's your favorite? The uh, no percent interest seller carryback. The, the, you know, this, the, uh, this is like a, I'm going to have to coin this phrase. Would you be willing to accept a down payment, the balance is monthly? If yes, how much down, how much per month? And then I, you know, I'll offer them a down payment, the balance is monthly. Because here's why. Because this whole cash flow machine works best when you have long-term financing. Right. And when you're working directly with sellers, either taking over their mortgages or they're doing a seller carryback or a combination of two. Mm-hmm. That's what creates the long-term cash flow. So you don't necessarily need to sell your note because if you get 30-year financing from a seller or 20-year financing with no interest and a low monthly payment, then you're golden. Then you can sell the property for as high as, high as you can get it for. Right. You know, you don't want to gouge folks, but people will pay over market, especially in the we're in the market right now. You're absolutely that right. Because, you know, we're the market is appreciating. Yes. So... I don't mind selling it for 10 or 15 over because in three years it's going to be worth that anyway. Exactly. But anyway, it's the, it's the number one strategy, buying strategy is the seller carry back with no interest. Awesome. Because it allows you to have the maximum net cash flow for the longest period of time. Exactly. Awesome. Um, do me a favor and explain a little bit more of a double wrap. Okay. A double wrap would be a scenario where, let's say you have a motivated seller, they've agreed to sell you the property subject to the financing, and Mm -hmm. subject to is just literally the the financing stays in the seller's name and you take the ownership of the property. Right. That's subject to in a nutshell. So if there's an underlying lien on the property, and let's say there's $40,000 of equity, um, I have to negotiate with that seller to get them their equity in one of two different ways. Um, One of the older strategies is to let them wait for their equity by selling the property on a lease option or selling it on a note with a balloon so you can cash out that note within 24 to 36 months. So you can monetize your equity and pay your seller their equity. Gotcha. So that's one of the older strategies. But but I want this thing to tick for as long as it can. I don't want to have to worry about cashing out that seller within three or five years. I want it to go as long as I can so we can create a second note for their equity. Okay. So if I'm going to give them, say if they have $40,000 in equity, I'm going to give them $5,000 as a down payment. Mm-hmm. Now there's 35000 that I can write up on a second lien. So a wrap is essentially just an additional note in deed of trust. And it's typically higher than the first, but if we're going to double wrap it, so if the first lien, let's say, was $60,000 of debt that I'm taking subject to, I'm going to mm-hmm. create another lien for 35000 That's the second. That's mm-hmm. essentially a wrap. Now, when I sell the property for 120000 now that's a the third wrap. wrap. That's Got the you. third. It's a third lien position. Mm-hmm. And it's all inclusive. There's not... 120 plus 35 plus 60 owed, Mm -hmm. there's 60 underlying with 30 on top. My spread is the difference between, you know, the 95 and 120. Mm -hmm. So in the event that my seller, I mean, my buyer sells the house in 10 years, whatever's owed on those underlying liens get paid off at closing. 
and I keep the difference. Exactly. Awesome. I just wanted to make, I wanted you to, to explain that more because uh, I've had a lot of questions about that. Uh, yeah, from some and then of my another listeners. strategy is, you know, like in, investors that do this in high volume is, let's say, you know, let's say it's a luxury property and there's, um, you know, half a million dollars um, that's owed against a house. Let's say it's worth 700 Well, what I can do is I can create a wrap when I buy to offset that seller's balance sheet so it okay. doesn't look like debt so if they want to go buy another property down the road mm -hmm. they don't have a mortgage that's coming off their balance sheet as an expense okay so i can create an iou to the seller so on their balance sheet it's income that covers that debt and if they were looking to get a mortgage down the road it wouldn't throw their debt to income ratio off so essentially you basically create another note for what's owed exactly to okay. cover that, and then you'd be selling it again on another wrap. Sure. Or depending on what state you're in, you could sell it on a lease option. I know down in New Mexico, I have a client down there, and mm -hmm. he's in the perfect state because he can do lease options, he can do contract for deed, which is basically, right. they call it agreement for sale, which is creating a note-bearing, creating an interest-bearing note without transferring the deed. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a perfect world, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to create a note at 10% interest, but you're not getting the deed until you pay this note off. Right. So there's, there's, yeah. you know, I know that there's a lot of gray area, and I would say a gray area. There's a lot of cloud yeah. over people's minds deciphering between those different strategies and what this means and what that means. But it's, we call it the terms business. Yes. There's just different paperwork for different states. You write them up a little bit differently, mm -hmm. but you're just creating the spread between the two contracts, between your purchase when you buy from the seller and then when you sell the property you know, with your end buyer. All you're trying to do is create a spread there. Right. Obviously, the bigger the equity, the bigger the payday. Sure. But you can get in and out of deals. I focus on the spread. I don't focus on the equity. Awesome. And the beautiful thing about what we do as real estate investors is the more that you're educated and learn the other creative options and ways of helping homeowners, the more money yes. you're going to make. So education yes. is critical, and that's where we're kind of going into your Hidden Cash Flow Fortunes uh, program. Uh, if you want to talk a little bit about that, you can. I just want to make sure uh, I'm going to have the link provided, hiddencashflowwithlow.com. Make sure you go over there. Uh, check out his webinar. Very, very good information. Uh, excellent program. Uh, if you want to share a little bit about that, and now you can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I take it back to, to the way that I started. Um, you know, if you don't have your lenders and private money and your partners and all these other things that seasoned investors have, then your strategy is to do seller carrybacks and subject to. Mm -hmm. So I go through that process of showing you how to target leads online. Um, and I call it the free leads. You know, there's tons and tons of different ways to, to dig up leads. Yes. Um, so I kind of take you by the hand, show you what I'm thinking, show you how to target markets. Um, give you the scripts to make phone calls, and you would not believe the people that actually pick the phone up and just make phone calls to people that have their properties for sale by owner and for rent off of Craigslist. People are buying houses off of Craigslist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't matter what <coughs> program you do. If you don't take action, like on the front of your shirt there, if you don't take action and make those outbound phone calls, That's then it. you're never going to put any deals together. Never. It doesn't matter what strategy you're chasing. So, you know, we literally, you know, we do a, we do a three-day boot camp, and, um, and on day one, we give everybody homework. And one of, the, one of the homework assignments is call 30, you know, or as many people as you can tonight. I want you to spend two to three hours mm -hmm. just making phone calls. So at our last event, there was a lady that got three leads just from doing what I told her. Mm -hmm. I just told her, I said, look, when somebody says hello, just say, I saw your property for sale. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Right? So they get to go and they start talking, 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 talking because they got a property. They want to sell it. Right. And then just simply ask them, would you be willing to, to sell your property with a down payment and the balance of monthly? If it's yes, how much down, how much per month? Great. I'll get back to you with an offer. Well, there's a lady that got three leads, and literally, she bought two houses. Wow. She bought two houses. Wow. And she was so excited that that week after she left, she was like, oh, my gosh, tell the boys those <laughs> two properties I got are closing next month. Oh, you know, and awesome. then um, we were talking to her the other day, 
Um, and uh, her, I did a, I did a webinar the uh, last week, and mm -hmm. this is kind of funny, but her husband was watching the webinar, and he was saying, "Honey, I think you need to come look at this." And she saw it was me. She's like, "Oh my gosh, that's Ian!" She goes, "That's the program I've been working. Those are the two houses we did. That's how I learned it from him." Great. So they're up in Montana. So. So they did awesome. it. She pulled it off, and it was literally just that simple. Would you be willing to accept a down payment, bounce monthly? If they say yes, deal. Deal. That is fantastic. And yeah, it's like you said, it's all about taking action. And I'm looking forward to working with you here in the near, near very near future. Yeah, uh, on some opportunities. And uh, thank you again for coming on. Very last question. I like to ask this question sure. to my guests. <clears throat> Excuse me. Starting from scratch. If you didn't have any money. You know, if you were just starting brand new in a new market, what would you do? Well, you know, I get asked that quite a bit, and I'm actually working on a program. Um, I'm not going to let you know the name of it or tell you exactly <laughs> what it is. Okay. But what I can say, though, is if I was going to start from zero and I didn't know anything, um, here's Golden Nuggets, guys. <laughs> I would literally start by marketing for cash buyers. I would run ghost ads. I'd go down to the foreclosure auctions. I'd get on every wholesaler's list in the area. And every time a house sold, I'd wait two weeks and I'd drive by the house, wait for that investor to get in the middle of his renovation. And I'd, I'd you know, oh, there's a house being renovated. I'd get out of the car. I'd go introduce myself. I'd get his business card. Mm -hmm. I would build a list of cash buyers. And I would spend probably a month doing that intensely. And once I built a good couple handfuls of real players, real cash buyers, mm -hmm. then I would go out to the market and I would find other wholesalers, other investors and homeowners that have properties for sale and I would ne negotiate an arrangement w with them and I would uh, get those properties under contract and then I would assign those contracts to my cash buyers. Nice. So that's zero marketing. It's just back to taking action. Yep. And, and, and what I like to say about real estate is – it's a relationship business. Yes. It's all about relationships. It's relationships, communication, and paperwork. That is it. That's it. Yes. Awesome. Well, Ian, thank you again, guys. Go over to hiddencashflowwithlow.com right now. Take action and get this information from Ian. Um, definitely invest. For those of you that have been asking me, you know, what other ways can I capitalize on these leads if people are not interested in wholesaling, but they're motivated? I don't know what to do with the lead. Well, you go back and listen to this interview again and then go to Hidden Cash Flow with Low and get connected with Ian. OK, thanks again, Ian. Everybody, as always, take action. Thank you.